Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the Venom F5 Concept Red Yellow Star, which is not the same car as the yellow Purple Star one. Uh, this one is a Gold Star version you can get from Gold Keys, which is nice because you don't have to pay actual money unless you have to pay for keys like I did. You don't have to pay actual money normally to get it, provided you saved enough keys, of course. All right, so with the help of the Mysterious Stranger, we're going to go through the stage six effects of this car, uh, mainly because it's coming up as a car for showdown. Plus, I wanted to discuss a little bit about um, the effect of low PP, high EVO when it comes to live racing. This is yet another good example of why low for performance point high EVO cars can be competitive in live under the current matchmaking system. This is always subject to change, and we just got a new update, so... Again, I won't know until I'm fully updated what, if anything, Natural Motion tweaked again without telling us. But as of right now, uh, low performance point, high EVO cars should be very competitive. All right, let's get into it first without going to stage five only. Why? Because this car is so fast at lower upgrades and have such high EVO that it incredibly can already beat Tempest 3 without stage five. Literally, I'm running stage four, almost everything minus uh, nitrous, which I can also put to stage four, just kind of even out the things here. And just with these upgrades, you'll see that despite the EVO going down, which can be tuned, it is really fast. It is fast enough to get one through the elite time trial for tier five, certainly, but actually fast enough to basically get through the entire challenge for Tempest 3 Tier 5. If you look at Tempest 3 Tier 5, you start off, okay, you start off at 685 performance points. Notice we're at 679. We have leeway to add more parts just for the initial PP bracket, and you can already beat the final challenge. That's how ridiculously fast this car is. Now, of course, uh, Hennessy fusions, uh, much like Bugatti fusions, don't come easily, and you're going to end up spending a lot of keys and or and or money getting the fusions. But we're only talking about upgrading to fourth stage here. We're not even talking about fifth stage upgrades. So a lot of the big points you need for fusions hasn't even come into play yet. Yes, you still need epic fusions for at least a few parts, but you need like one. Okay. 8.878, and that's before I even play with this, and I'm pretty sure uh, with a little longer nitrous duration or even a little shorter, it doesn't really matter, you can get enough points here to get that dyno time or under. So it's an extremely fast car, whether you choose to upgrade it higher or not. But even more interesting is how the EVO points work with this car is that at stage three upgrades with stage four transmission, you can get some pretty incredible EVO points. And it actually starts to go down as you go to stage five uh, and four. And also the performance point jump is pretty substantial between stage three and four. So stage three, we'll talk at the end after we do the rest of stage six effects, but stage three actually may be a sweet spot for matchmaking purposes. Okay, regardless, at stage four only, you can beat the entire Tempest Challenge. Let's see. You'll need one Epic Fusion for engine. You will need two, three Epic in, uh, Transmission, which is going to be tough. You will need one, two for tire. And you will need none for body. You will need none for... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. You need one for nitrous. And you need three for intake, four for intake, oh boy. So sprinkles throughout this is enough epic fusions to make this a headache for newer players, but ultimately you have to understand that the bigger list of epic and rares tend to be in that last two stages. So these usually um, come out to a bunch of epics for those last two stages, which generally you won't need. Look at this, there's five epics just for body within the last two stages, and another four epics for the tire in the last two stages. So again, you, those are really critical to get to that ultimate time, but you could probably get the car pretty much 
to stage five and easily missing epic fusions get through tempest um three tier five okay that being said um let's go ahead and talk about putting this car into stage five only and then we can start jumping into stage six the good and bad news here is this stage five only much like the mclaren f1 and this car really reminds me of the, the way the f1 works out is you have a car that is really already extremely fast at stage five only which means your margin between stage five and stage six is about less than a second and that goes to the stage six effects because each individual stage six is not going to do as much because it won't there's just not that much time to play with here so understand that you will need stage six is to get to the fastest possible of the car but uh at stage five only it is already impressively fast okay and it likes the zero 100 2.0 final drive and really a pretty decent duration um nitrous like 5.1 5.2 or so that's just for maximum evo it doesn't necessarily translate ultimately to the best performance but 7.856 on the dyno at 406 mile per hour not only that look at the zero to 100 time it is a quick sprinter too understand that the final sprint the final sprint and the fastest sprint in T5 is a 2.313 0 to 100. And you're doing 1.5 with stage 5. So there you go. Now, everybody knows, or most people know, that by the end, this car will do 6.9s. Okay. That means you're really looking at about 9 tenths of a second reduction out of seven stage sixes. However, the dyno doesn't actually hit below seven. So you're really talking about about eight and a half tenths spread over seven stage sixes. That's gonna be a problem because that means if one or two stage sixes are say three tenths change, uh, that's six tenths right there, then the rest of them are junk. Is it gonna play out that way? Let's start looking at them. First thing first, let's move the engine as we always do for these videos. We're going to start our engine and move right. Engine has a drop in EVO, increase in performance points. And for the most part, you're not really going to tune this car much different from here. You're going to kind of leave this tune pretty much there, except for nitrous and possibly one or two other stage sixes. But 2.0, 0, 0100 generally will give you the best EVO points. You're not going to get more out of it by tweaking it. So you're going to tweak nitrous and nothing else. Or you go straight off a of dyno and it's a 7.73 from a 7.75. That's not so, I'm sorry, 7.85. So that's not so good. It is about a tenth drop. But again, don't expect huge drops on many of the stage sixes. It just simply doesn't have that much to play with. So it's a drop, but it's not a big drop. So engine, useful? Sure. Is it going to make a huge difference? Probably at the very end, it's the kind of thing you need to kind of push this car from like a 7.2 back to all the way down to a 6.9. That's when you need these little ones. There's probably going to be big ones that will push you through down to that time. Even worse, 7.783. Again, uh, no real tuning here to speak of. You're not going to get much out of it. Uh, you're going to be stuck basically tuning to whatever it is that keeps the evil point high uh, but 7.783 looks like it's going to be the lowest I'm going to get oh 7.781 I'll take that let's see if I can get even more out of it no let's just leave it at that and say 7.781 it's a drop but it's not much so engine turbo nothing big yet let's move on to intake do we expect anything big out of D3? Usually, no. It's very rare for D3 to make much of a difference. So I'm not really surprised here. Okay, again, minor jump and reduction. Uh, and that's that's interesting about this is as you get to the final uh, build, uh, the EVO points actually doesn't go up by much. It's It actually jumps more in the beginning than near the end. 7.825 play with the nitrous that's where you're going to find any more points can I get two 
Now it looks like we're stuck with one. So 7.825 is what this turns in. And again, even worse than turbo. This is barely a change from stage five only, which is already 7.855. So there you go. That's in the few hundreds range. And that's expected again, uh, being the weakest of the stage sixes so far. So three weak ones right off the bat. That means we have four left. One of them's got to be decent. Let's see what comes up with. Um, nitrous, that's nice. It's a jump. And then it's also tunable. So we, we can get a few more points out of it, potentially uh, getting a nice drop. Let's see. Now, yeah, looking good. Nope, dropped a lot there. 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", 2'4", 6'6", gives us 7.675. That's a decent drop. About 2 tenths now uh, from 7.855. Not quite 2 tenths, but decent drop. Definitely more so than uh, the ones that came before it, but it's not a huge drop. It's just decent. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Moving right along here. Body. Body on a tier five car, we all know. Um, oftentimes is a big stage six, but in this case, I didn't see much changes there. But nitrous has to be retuned because we took it out. And duration has to increase. 2466. But a 7.562 isn't bad. Um, so this is a nice drop here. This is going about almost 3 tenths, which is big. So body definitely jumping to the lead, even though the Evo points didn't look like it changed much different than nitrous after tuning, body still came out ahead of it. So body's pretty big. Keep that one in mind. When we do the... Um, stage six combinations, I'm definitely going to test out body. Oh, look at that. Tire had a nice jump too. Now the question is whether tire is going to be nitrous or it's going to come out close to nitrous or close to body. Let's find out. Now with tire, the question is, can I go lower grip? No, it still has the best evil points here. And can you get more? No, 7.609. That is still quite decent. And I think it actually beats nitrous by a little bit. We'll go back and look at that later. So top three right now, body tire nitrous or body nitrous tire. Uh, very close between nitrous and tire. So they're probably interchangeable for purpose of results. And we come to transmission. Is transmission going to be big? Probably not. And here's why. Out of the three that we just looked at, they each dropped two, three tenths. That puts them pretty close to a 7.1 already. So you can't really expect transmission to come in and do a lot too. Uh, we're running out of space here, right? The time drops just isn't there. And, and of course it is not. Uh, 7.702, what there's probably, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe one point I can squeeze out of it somewhere. Maybe, doesn't look like it. So it looks like I'm stuck here. 7.702 may end up being the best that it's going to do. All right, 7.702, but with 5.3, it's actually what I had before. All right, so 7.7024 transmission puts it near the bottom, and I believe both turbo and engine was in the 7.6 and change range, making transmission one of the bottom ones. So intake transmission, no good. Nitrous um, and Tire and body would be the optimal combination of three that could probably get you close to seven. In fact, let's find out. Just body, nitrous, and tire. Let's see where it puts the car. I suspect quite close to 7.1. And that means you're just making up the rest of that with the other stage sixes. Maybe 7.2. Let's not, because the engine did give over a tenth. So maybe 7.2, 7. Point, high 7.2s is what I'm kind of, expecting here. Let's see. Again, you're not going to really get any change, positive change out of tweaking these. So it purely comes down to 
pushing the nitrous around and see what duration it likes, 7.235. So literally, you're going from 7.8 to 7.235 with three stage sixes. Uh, and if you take out one of them, maybe 7.3, 7.4s, um, that means the other four stage sixes will only shave off enough to get you to about 7.0. So let's go ahead and put those four in real quick, get a baseline, and then we'll put this car to max and uh, then start driving it around a bit with different settings. Because I'm going to jump back to stage three as well for the live setting that I've been using, which is relatively effective. It's not perfect, but it's relatively effective. All right. So back here, let's go ahead and put this back to that. 7.856, okay, that's the, again, we're looking at 7.855, I believe, for um, stage, wait, didn't I get one more point out of it before? I could have swore it was a 7 point, oh, there it is. All right, so that's, again, just to kind of recap the stage five only, let's go back and put the other four in, let's see what it does. Um, the other four stage sixes, again, just looking at the estimates here of effects really should drop the overall by about, I would say, three tenths to a 7.5, uh, something to a 7.6, maybe 7.5 in on the high end, uh, assuming I'm estimating this somewhat correctly. Okay, 7.535. Okay, so. 4 gets to 7.5, 3 gets to 7.2, and 2 will probably get you to 7.3 with the big ones. So you, you can see how this car plays out with the stage 6s. You want nitrous, tire, and body first and foremost, uh, but you're not really suffering that much when you have like a 7.8 car that is literally stage 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it to max, and we'll, we'll do a run in that first before I start going back to uh, lower um, performance point setup. Okay, so this car is 715, so it's actually higher maxed out than some other cars, which only comes up to 714. It's just a fast car. I mean, it's really, you know, you're dynoing like 7.07. I'm not sure, maybe here. I, I forgot what the best tune theoretically is all I know is that um, for me at least getting into the sixes have been somewhat difficult mainly because I'm not exactly sure what's the best way to drive it I'll look at the videos online again and I suggest you two as well um, but something along the line of you got to get out of first at about 30 some miles per hour uh, second and then nitrous in third but you need to also launch well So something like this, and then it's like deep good or early perfect. I mean, this is kind of sloppy. Um, if I even get a 6.9 something, I'd be actually pretty happy. So 7.017, so I didn't quite get it there. Let me um, see if I can't do better here. I know it can hit 6.93s in theory, or 4 in theory, uh, on the right device with the right shifting, uh, but again, you're going to have to practice a little bit. And if you have to use the launch button, even more so. Okay. All right. So this one, I'm going to try to shift early perfect or deep good. And hopefully that'll be at least a 6.9 something. I don't think the car is hard to get 6.9 with. Um, just that 6.95 to 6.94, that's going to require some perfect timing on your part, both on the launch as well as the shift points. Never underestimate the importance of shifting. Uh, it can make or break your runs. So even if you have a great uh, tune, you still got to shift it right to get ultimately far in showdown. Now, this will be one of the faster showdown cars. Uh, third best, I think, or second best. I'm not sure if the uh, Tuatera is better or not. Uh, but certainly the yellow F5 should be a little bit faster than this one uh, ultimately. But again, between drivers, it could come down to somebody shifting a little off and you still do better than they can. So there's nothing wrong with using this car. In fact, it should be very competitive in showdown. But let's talk about live racing with this car for a second. 
is an interesting time bracket if you put the card there. The problem with that time bracket is you're mostly facing cards that can hit 7.7 .7 to 7.6. Uh, those will dominate that bracket. You have the advantage of having much lower performance point than most of your opponents there. So initial placement of this card based on low performance point, high EVO says you may end up um, actually with a somewhat competitive set at 7.85. Uh, the thing is that it's actually better to have even lower uh, performance points and high EVO. In those kind of lobbies, you will have a much greater lobbying advantage. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's go ahead and take this in to live and just kind of see what kind of cars I'm going to face. Obviously, since I've never on this account taken this car into live, what's going to happen is my initial matchmaking should be somewhat favorable, may even be in the 8.0 lobby. Uh, but again, when you're talking about 7.8 dyno, uh, you're looking at cars that are probably going to do 8.0, 7.9 to 7.7. Uh, some of these guys, most of these cars you can see right here, all these guys for the most part can run under uh, 7.8 seconds if upgraded fully. Uh, but if not, if they are in fact near your performance points, they should be 8.0 cars. So if you run your 7.8, 7.9, you should be competitive. That's, of course, assuming I can actually connect to somebody, too. Um, let's try someone else. Now, this is a car that should hit, I think, 7.7 7 to 6 fully maxed. So it could very well be a fully maxed car um, in this lobby. And again, I can't connect. So let's try one more person, somebody else. This is getting kind of frustrating, to be honest. Javelin. Okay, well, at least I get a race this time. But this is a uh, dino busting car. And, and of course, he bets me money, so he probably is dino busting. Uh, but let's see what he runs. It'll at least give me sort of a feel. Maybe if I can uh, push him hard enough, I'll kick him into the higher lobby. Who knows, right? That's, that's my revenge for losing money. All right, so here we go. Okay, and he disconnects. Oh, my God. All right, I'm not even going to run hard. Um, and I went, I win too. So he disconnected after he actually, quote, connected um, to the race itself. You know, his in, who knows? Maybe he even had his own run without me and won that too. Who knows? It's weird. All right, well, that's the risk of be betting money with a glitchy game. You could bet and then the game disconnects you and you lose your money. Who knows? Uh, but I'm sure $20,000 isn't going to hurt him. When you're at this kind of a lobby, you should have more than 20000 to bet. Okay. All right. Let me see. If, I mean, I'm really struggling here to find somebody to race um, that will actually connect and won't refuse me. Seriously, you just refuse me because what? Is there a reason to refuse me? I mean, uh, all right. This guy doesn't have a swap symbol. Maybe, maybe he'll race me. I understand swappers sometimes don't want to race anybody who's not swapping in this lobby. Fine perfectly fair and looks like he's not connecting either all right so this is turning into a um, wild goose chase over here for somebody who will actually race me and not disconnect or somebody I can actually connect with I'm just gonna start clicking everybody because this is getting out of hand somebody race me once just so I can have a race no no connection refused no connection refused welcome to live racing Oh, thank you. Thank you, Scottish Chief. Appreciate the race. Wouldn't lose or draw. Um, you know, this is just to get my feeling on where I am with this lobby. That's all it is. Okay, now, don't assume he isn't going to catch up. That car gets fast near the end. Now, I assume he ran all out. I ran all out. 7.794 to a 7.808. I'm in the right lobby. So meaning, despite the fact I'm running very low performance points here and high EVO, at this level of lobby, I am not, okay, 
outside of the bracket. I'm, I'm actually in the right bracket. This is where the low performance point and the evil point isn't benefiting me from a lobby standpoint of actually matchmaking. But that can change when you get to a different lobby. And I'm going to give him his win back. It's only fair. Okay, he does have a swap symbol, and I did appreciate the fact that he actually raced me, but I'm not going to race again since I need to go. Uh, 7.766, so he could have actually outran me if he pushed his car a little bit harder. All right, so no advantage there with this car in that lobby, right? Because you're already in the seven-second lobbies. But let's go ahead now put the car to a different bracket. This is where I'm going to lower this car to stage three for the most part. And we're going to leave stage four trans so I can tune. Now watch that even though I've dropped tons of stages, lo watch those points go down, right? I just went from 702 down to 650. But did I lose much in way of EVO? No. The EVO is extremely high still, leaving me at over 2,200. That's crazy for stage three. Okay, and I can still tweak the car a little bit and get more points. I'll take that 85. Where was that? Wait. All right, 2285. We'll take that and run with it. 9.911. Now, remember, with a 7.8 dyno, I can run 7.7s, but it's basically in the 7.7 .7 to 7.9 lobby. So I was in the exact right lobby. I am somewhat competitive, but really you go to that lobby to swap, not to try to beat people. Versus here, you have really high performance point, but very low EVO now. Now, this is lower than tier 4 EVO, um, which is always a competitive position because a max tier 4 is generally 674. You're at 650 doing 9.9, .9, which is faster than most tier 4s. At this level of difference with performance point and EVO, things get a little different. Okay. Now, the Audi is a pretty competitive car here, and it runs under dyno. I ran a 10.1, and I pushed him a little bit, but he probably ran a 9.9, 9.8. Why? 10.0. Okay, so is it because I can't win in this lobby? I'm in the wrong lobby? No. I'm actually in the 10.3 lobby, if my estimates are correct. So most cars here will run 10.2 to maybe 9.9, depending on how well they're tuned. For example, NSXR um, right here can be pretty competitive versus, say, the um, the Audi, which is actually pretty good, too. I suspect that Audi was running better than what it was dynoing. Let's see what the NSXR does, and let's see if it, it too, run around 10.0. Now, I can run 9.9. I just kind of shifted wrong because I was using the um, shift pattern from when you have more upgrades. Here, I'm going to use nitrous in second, and I can slow down. I should run a 10-0 something, and I soundly beat him with a bet. So you know he was pushing, okay? And that's an NSXR. That's not a car that runs poorly in these lobbies. So again, easily won that with a 10-0 run. Um, he wants another race. He can win this time. I'm not giving his 20,000 back, though. Uh, it's not like he's going to miss it. He'll make it back on this run anyway. All right. So, again, I'm going to test again with one more opponent after this. But I, as I'm saying, I am actually in the 10-second lobby, not the 9-second lobby. Even though I dyno 9.9, .9, I get a favorable uh, matchmaking because now the EVO is really high and the performance point is really low. You will see this effect um, quite often in these slower lobbies. As you get closer and closer to the top lobbies, uh, the cars kind of even out. It doesn't really matter if you have low performance point, high performance point. They will always end up kind of together without as much of this, quote, lobbying advantage uh, being so obvious. 
where I've seen even more so this lobbying advantage is cars like the Regera running 2,200 or 2,000 plus um, EVO at 630 performance point, but doing 12s, it doesn't matter because it still does quite well. I mean, it has the same lobbying advantage as I'm showing here, and I'm going to beat this car too. I'm pretty confident I can beat pretty much everything in here because the only guys that are going to beat me are the ones that are running dino busting tunes like I would in some cases in this lobby. Meaning I can put an LB Aventador here that dynos 10.2 and run 9.6, well, maybe not that much, 9.8, um, because it can run over three tenths under dyno. That's another deadly car in this lobby. But outside of that, type of cars, which is both low performance point high EVO and beats dyno, your low performance point high EVO cars will be competitive. And that's where the F5 concept is competitive, but not deadly. Meaning this is not a car that's going to win absolute every race, especially against a car like this one. Okay, I'm, I'm expecting to lose here. I'm expecting he may even bet me money. But the competitiveness is in the matchmaking itself, much like the Nissan Juke. No, it doesn't beat Dino easily, but yes, it can still win. Why? Because it has a very good low PP, high EVO setup that gives you a matchmaking advantage outright. Uh, you won't beat Dino, but you'll still matchmake very favorably simply because your car gets like a two tenths advantage when you go in the lobby. Everybody else is dinoing slower than you, and you're running under your. I'm running two tenths slower than my Dino and winning. Think about that. Okay, all right, enough rambling about live uh, matchmaking with low performance point high EVO. I just want to point that out with this car because it stands out in that category because it's a crazy amount of uh, EVO that it has at 650 performance points. There are other cars out there, like I mentioned, Regaris, one of them, the S7, Celine does it to some degree, um, the Jaguar XJ220 is another one, um, the Tuatera uh, has a dyno beating tune but not so much this one. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, speaking of the Juke, might as well show you. Notice the Juke also has a similar situation, not as aggressively different as the um, the F5, but it's the same concept. So these are all cars that can utilize this particular um, situation to its advantage. All right, I don't know how I lost the F5. I must have moved a, a garage or something. In any case... Um, what you can know is that this car is a good car simply because it doesn't need as many upgrades to be super fast. The stage 6 effects are less impressive simply because it's so fast already at stage 5. So if you want the absolute best performance, obviously you need all the stage 6s. But if you're missing the stage 6s but you got the fusions, this car will serve you quite well uh, without needing those kind of crazy upgrades even in live. All right, so that's my stage six effect for the Venom F5 concept, along with a little bit of a discussion with the impact of low PP high EVO when it comes to live racing and competitive uh, matchmaking. I hope that it was helpful information to you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, please do leave a like. And if you like my channel and would like notifications when I put up new videos, subscribe so you can get those notifications. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.